Hello and welcome everybody, this is Roland Hartman from graphicinmotion.com and in this tutorial I will show you how to customize my 3D Magic Cube logo reveal After Effects template. If you already bought this template through VideoHive then thank you very much, I really appreciate your support. Now let's get started with the customization. First of all let's open up the project, therefore I go to File and then I select Open Project, then navigate to your 3D Magic Cube logo reveal folder and open up the After Effects project file. After Effects will bring up this warning which says that this project must be converted from version 10. This only means that it was created with an older version, actually version 10, which is After Effects CS5, but the original file will be unchanged and After Effects will create a new file that you can save and use. When After Effects opened up the project, then there should be a few compositions already open. Actually, we have the logo composition, setup, audio, and then the two different render compositions. The first step of the customization process is to import your logo. Therefore you go to the logo composition and then you can import your file. The easiest way to import a file is to simply double click in an empty area in your project window. So let's just double click here, then navigate to your logo folder, click import. I have to move it over a little bit like so, import. And then I will take my logo and drag it into my logo composition and position it on top of my placeholder here. Now I will disable my placeholder, you can of course also delete it and now I want to scale down my logo a bit so I select my logo layer, press S on the keyboard and scale it down to maybe something like this and then I will move it up a bit like so. Now you can of course also edit this subtitle, you see that here is a subtitle text layer. If you double click this then you can enter your title. You can of course also turn this off if you do not want any title in your logo composition. So this is the first step of our customization, now let's move on to create a look in the setup composition. Select the setup composition and in the setup composition select the setup layer. Now make sure that your effect controls panel is visible, if it's not then you can come to window and then you can select the effect controls panel and activate it. In the effect controls panel you see that we have a bunch of different sliders. Let's move our time indicator to maybe around 3 seconds, shortly after 3 seconds because then we can see a little bit more what is going on here and I make sure that my selection tool is active. Now let's take a look what we can do here. First of all we can change the cube logo opacity and this is the opacity of the logo that is visible inside our cube. I will increase the size here a bit so that you can see a little bit better. Now if I increase this to 100 you will see what this will do. Now all these elements here will become really opaque. If I decrease this to about 10 then these are of course less opaque. If I move to another frame we can even see this a little bit better. You see now the logo is nearly not visible anymore. The standard value is 50. So we'll set this back to a value of 50. The next option that you have here is to change the background color. By the way, if you hear some strange noises in the background while I'm recording here, I'm sorry for that, but there is some construction work going on in our building, so I really cannot change this. Let's move on with the background color one control. With this control you can change the background color. So let's select this color and let's say you want to change this to more of a reddish look or pinkish whatever. I'll just change it to a violet color for now and maybe increase the brightness a bit. And you see what this will do, it will increase the overall brightness but you also see that the glow here will get more intense. So the brighter you set this background color this may result in some weird stuff and this has to do with the glow settings of this project. I will show you this in a moment. But for now I just would recommend that you use rather dark colors. So in our case let's say we want this violet but let's make it darker so that the glow doesn't get this intense. So maybe something like this looks quite good. Let's click OK. Now for my second background color I just use the eyedropper tool here, take over this color and then I come in here and I really darken this so that it's nearly black, that I have a nice contrast between the middle areas and between the side areas. Now let's move on to the beachy texture opacity. If I set this to 100, 
then this will look really crazy. You see that now the background opacity is very, very strong. Of course, we do not want this. So you can set this to five. This is the standard value. Then it's a very slight texture. You could set it maybe to 10, but you can of course also turn it off and just set it to zero. Then you have a clean background and you have no texture on your background layer. Now let's move on to the cube textures on and off checkbox. If you take a look at the cubes here, and if I uncheck this now, you see that now the cubes are way brighter and there is no texture applied anymore. So you can turn on and off the texture with this checkbox. Let's say we do not want to use any texture here. So let's move on with the cube color. The cube color is the color of yeah, the small cubes here. So I can change this and because I used some purple here, maybe I want to use purple on my cubes as well. So I will take the eyedropper tool and take over the same color as I applied to my background. So this is a little bit dark, looks quite cool, but I want to increase the brightness a bit. So let's add a bit more of a brightness. And you see that now we get this nice shine here, this nice uh, glow. And now I can maybe make this a little bit desaturated to make this a little bit more subtle and create something like this. I think that this is a really nice look. So let's click OK and let's move on. Now we have the cubes fill opacity. If I set this to zero, you will see that all the color will go away and we only have the frame here. If I set this to 50, you can play around with these to get the look that you want from your cubes. The standard value is 100, which will create more obvious cubes. In this case, maybe I will reduce this to something like 75. I think this looks very nice. Now we have the cube fill width. The cube fill width is set to a zero, but actually it's not zero because we have this feather applied. So these two values always work together. If you decrease the fill feather, then we can see what this does. If I decrease it to 10, then I only have a very, very slight uh, edge and I do not nearly see it. So let's increase it to about 50. Now you see that this edge comes back here. So um, the cube fill feather controls this gradient between the sides of the walls and the middle. So if I increase this to 500 maybe, then you see that the cubes now are more or less filled. Let's set this back to 200 again and let's play around with the cubes fill width. So if you increase the fill width, you see that the cubes also become very, very opaque. And if I reduce the feather now to zero, you will see what this does. Now you suddenly have this very strange look and now it looks like uh, some kind of a structure. Now let's set this back to the standard values, fill feather 200 and fill width zero. Now let's move on to the cube stroke width and these are these edges here. They are now very small because it's set to three. If I increase this to maybe 25, you will see what this does. Now we get this edge here or this grid. And we can also change the look of these by changing the colors here a bit. So I can come in here and take over maybe this color here. And then I can come in here, take over this color. And I will make this a little bit brighter so that we have a nice gradient. And you see that we will get some nice glows here. And if I make this even a bit darker, then I have a little bit more contrast here. And you see that now the edges look a little bit more interesting. So I think that the edges look nice, but they are way too big. So I will decrease this again to three. And I'm happy with this. And let's say I'm happy with my layout. I'm actually really happy. It really looks cool. And if I take a look now at my final frame before the logo reveal, and I think that it's really nice. Maybe the glow is a little bit too strong. So you could turn down the opacity a little bit, or you can also just decrease the brightness of the cube's color. But Actually, I like it, so I will undo this. Now, let's take a look at some other options that we have to change the look of this template. A very important option is the glow here. So select the glow layer and let's take a look at the glow settings. One of the special settings of this template is that the glow operation is set to luminosity. 
the standard setting of a glow effect is add. And if I change this to add, you will see that this changes the complete look immediately. You see now uh, I can see my background colors actually. And now the glow is added. So it, it's a bit, so it's very bright. And you can of course use this option if you want, but then you should increase the threshold. So the standard value is 37. And you, I would recommend to increase this depending on the colors that you chose, maybe to 75 then you see that the glow gets not that strong. And you can also create a very nice look by changing this to add or even to screen and then just play around with your settings. As I said, if you change this back, so let's press Ctrl C a few times, that we are back to these values here and to luminosity, then you see that this creates this nice effect that we have got here. And I will show you this on this frame one more time, change it to add and increase this maybe to 60 and you see that we can change the look quite a bit by only changing the way the glow is set up. So two times Ctrl C to get our standard values back because I really like them. Now let's move on to the final step of this look setup and this is the color correction. You see that there is a color correction layer applied on top and on this color correction you can find a simple curves effect. Now if I turn off the curves effect then you will see the original look of this template and you see that we lose a little bit of contrast and I also played around with the colors a bit. So if you want you can now come in here and change the look whatever you want to do. So you can come in here, can go maybe to the blue channel and you see that I increased it in the darks a bit, but I decreased the blue values in the highlights. So if you want, you can of course now play around here, add more blue, then maybe come to the red values and decrease this a bit, take them out of the bright areas and maybe decrease the overall red values then we have this look, also looks quite cool. So you see, you can play around here and create your own individual look. Of course, if you do not want to use the curves effect, just delete it or disable it and use whatever effect you are comfortable to use for color correction. Okay, so this is basically it. Now let's move on to the audio composition because there we have also two options to choose from. You know that the audio is actually included in this template and let's move our time indicator to frame number zero. You see we have two different options here. We have the standard 3D cube intro audio. If you want to preview the audio, you can hit the semicolon on your numbers pad. So this is the first option and if you want to activate the second option, then activate the second layer, deactivate the first one. This is important that you do not have both activated because this will create too much import here. Then you can preview it again by pressing semicolon on your numbers pad. This is the second sound option that we have got. Now you can move on and choose your render resolution. First of all, we have the render 4K Ultra HD resolution. This composition, if we select it right here, has a resolution of 3840 by 2160 pixel, which is Ultra HD or 4K. And then we have the standard Full HD render composition, which of course has a resolution of 1920 times 1080 pixels. So make sure that if you want to render out, if you want to export your final video, that you choose one of these render compositions and that you do not export the setup composition. You could export the setup composition as well, but then you do not have any audio included in your video. Okay, so this is it with this customization tutorial. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I really hope that you like this template. If you already bought it, then please visit your download area and rate the template. If you did not yet buy it, then I hope that this tutorial helps to make a decision. Thank you very much and I really hope to see you soon. Goodbye.